Welcome to Math with Professor V. In this video, we'll be going over basic algebra review on the topic of solving linear equations. This is the first video in this series, Bridging the Gap from Pre-Calculus to Calculus, which is based on a textbook written by one of my colleagues. It's linked in the description. But what this textbook does is it aims in to approach pre-calculus through the lens of calculus itself. So this is just going to be a quick review of algebra topics covered in most intermediate level algebra courses. And then after this, we're going to discuss functions and the limit tool that makes all of calculus tick. So from there, we're going to use limits to motivate the discussion on different kinds of functions, polynomials, rational functions, even trig functions, exponential functions, etc. as we dive into the topics of calculus. But Building blocks are essential, so here we're going to start with basic algebra review. So we're going to focus our attention on linear equations. Most linear equations are of the form ax plus b equals c, where a, b, and c are fixed constants. Now, the dead giveaway that you're dealing with a linear equation is that your variable is raised to the first power, so we don't write the exponent. If it's raised to any other power, then we would indicate that. But when you just see plain old x or plain old y raised to the first, then that's a linear equation. And when you're asked to solve an equation, what you're being asked to do is find the values of x that make the equation a true statement. So let's look at an example. Say we have 2x plus 1 equals 9. If we were asked to solve for x, we would need to find a value for x that makes both sides equal. So, I mean, you could start by guessing. You could say, let me guess x is 1. Let's see if that works. Is 2 times 1 plus 1 equal to 9? Well, no. We get 3 on the left-hand side. That doesn't equal 9, so that's not a solution. You go, okay, I, I should probably bump it up. That was too small. Let's do 2 times 2 plus 1. Does that equal 9? Well, that's going to give me 5 on the left-hand side. No, that doesn't equal 9. Okay, let's go in more aggressively. Let me try 4. Is 2 times 4 plus 1, does that equal 9? Ah, yes, 9 is 9. But instead of guessing numbers, right, that's going to take forever. <laughs> we want a more concrete approach, and we rely on two basic skills or facts to be able to do this, to solve equations efficiently, not just dilly-dally guessing numbers all day. You are allowed to add or subtract the same number from both sides of an equation that preserves equality, and you're allowed to multiply or divide by any non-zero number from both sides. And these are really the only two skills that you need to solve a linear equation. Individually, the rules are very simple and straightforward, but typically you're going to need to use more than one of these moves um, in order to solve more complicated equations. So let me demonstrate for you how we would have solved 2x plus 1 equals 9. First, we would add or subtract a number from both sides. So your goal is really to like isolate the variable, to strip away all else. So to begin, I could subtract 1 from both sides, you see, and then I would just be left with 2x equals 8. The 1 here would cancel out, and then you perform the subtraction 9 minus 1 to get 8. The next step is multiplying or dividing by any non-zero number from both sides. So in this case, what would I do in order to get x by itself? I would divide by 2. Instead of underlining, I'm just going to write divide by 2. And then we're left with x is equal to 4. Okay? It's not always done this step first, that step second. Depends on the equation that you're given. But often it is. Okay? So let's look at some examples now. Find the solution or solutions to each of the following linear equations. So here we have 2x plus 5 equals 11. Now, it is true. If you're going to need to divide by a constant, right, to isolate the variable and subtract, you will always do the subtraction first. It's basically like your reverse order of operations. You've heard of PEMDAS probably, right, that you're supposed to do multiplication and division before addition, subtraction. But with solving equations, it's the other way around. So I'm going to subtract 5 first. Subtract 5, subtract 5. And then we have 2x, this is now gone, right, is equal to 6. Very good. And then in the next step, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, divide by 2, then the 2 cancels, and I'm left with x is equal to 3. Now, some people stop and box their answer here. 
a very precise way of doing it is you put your answer in a solution set. So here's my solution set. You list all possible solutions in it. In this case, three. Okay, very good. Now the next one, don't let the fraction scare you. It's just a mental block probably that you've built being traumatized by fractions at some early age in life. But anyways, they're fine, don't worry. Five over six X equals 15 over two. Notice, when we knew we needed to divide by two, it was no big deal. Treat five sixths exactly that way. I need to divide both sides by five sixths. But let me show you a cleaner way of doing it. So you have five six x equals 15 over two. I mean, you could write, oh, divide by five over six, divide by five over six. But look what a hot mess this is looking like. Let me show you a more efficient way. When you want to divide and the the coefficient is a fraction, right? That constant is a fraction. Easier way of thinking about it is I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal means flip it, six over five. And then I obviously have to do the same thing over here. And that's equivalent to dividing by five over six. And this is so nice, cause look, you can just see how everything's gonna cancel out on the left. And you're gonna be left with plain old X as we wanted. And then now it's not so bad we're just going to multiply these two fractions together. Now, I wouldn't multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then try to reduce. It's gonna make the fraction big and more difficult to deal with. Cancel as you go. So look, I can cancel out five, and this 15 becomes a three. Cancel out this two, and this six becomes a three also. So now all I have to do is multiply three times three, and we get x is nine. Yes, put it in the solution set. See, that was pretty painless. Now, this one was not so wild because we only had one fraction on each side. Sometimes when you have multiple fractions in the equation, it's more pleasant if you multiply through by the denominator of any or all of the fractions early on so that you can just clear them out and be fraction free. So what do we mean? Well, looking here, I have two fractions and then two terms that don't have them. If you just wanna get rid of all your fractions, you could multiply the entire equation through by two and by three. So two times three is six. I'm gonna multiply the whole equation through by six. If you need to remind yourself, it's six over one technically, right? Okay, so that six will distribute. So we have 2m times 6 minus 1 half times 6 over 1 equals m times 6 plus 1 third times 6 over 1. And for a hot second, it looks worse. It does. But then we're going to clean up. You're going to be so happy right here. Watch. So this is going to give us 12m minus 3 equals 6m. This cancels, right? Plus 2. Now we haven't dealt with an equation like this up until this point. Notice the variable, we have 12m on the left and then we have more variables on the right. We need them all on the same side and then we need all the constants on the same side. Typically I like to keep all my variables on the left, okay? But it doesn't really matter. So let me subtract 6m, that way all the variables are gonna be on the left. This cancels. And then 12m minus 6m, that's going to give me 6m, good, minus 3 equals 2. So now let's put all the constants on the right. So add 3, add 3, ba -dum, ba -dum. this cancels, and then I have 6m equals 5. Okay, finally, variables on the left, constants on the right. To get m all by itself, I need to divide by 6. And we're left with m is equal to 5 over 6. Now leave it like that. Nobody wants a decimal unless they ask for it. So by default, leave it, leave your answers as simplified fractions, unless instructed to do otherwise. So this is going in the solution set. Okay, next one, number four. Look at all of these fractions. Oh my goodness. Instead of dealing with it as is, let me multiply through by all of the denominators. Now notice we have the same denominator twice here and the same denominator twice here. You don't need to multiply by 3 and 5 and 5 and 3. You can just multiply by 3 and 5, 15, the least common multiple, because that would clear everything out. So don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, please. I'm going to multiply through by 15. Let's see. Are you up for distributing? 
and simplifying all at the same time or will that stress you out? Oh, you got it? Okay, so 15 times r over three, that's gonna give me five r minus 15 times one fifth is three equals 15 times r over five, that's three r. And then 15 times one third, that's five. Very good. Now we're at the same position we were in the previous problem right here. So you've got variables on both the left and right side and constants on both the left and right. So we got to get them all on the same side. So variables on one side, constants on the other. Let me start by subtracting 3r from both sides. So this cancels. And then you have 2r minus 3 equals 5. And then let's go ahead and add 3 to both sides. Boom. And what do we get? 2r is equal to eight. Last step, exactly. Divide by two, divide by two, and you get r is equal to four. So put that in the solution set. Perfect. Now, remember anytime you have parentheses like this and something sitting outside, you need to distribute all the way through. So start distributing before you do anything else, before you try to solve. Let's try this example here. So if I distribute everything out, we'll have 4x minus 4 plus 2x plus 6 equals 2x. Now, before you continue, you want to combine like terms. Like terms are terms that have the same variable raised to the same power. So here we have 4x and 2x. If I add those together, that gives me 6x. And then negative 4 plus 6, that's positive 2. We want variables, let's just stick with keeping them on the left, constants on the right. So let me subtract 2x from both sides. Okay, and don't get freaked out. Yes, we're gonna have a zero on the right-hand side for a moment. It's not a problem. Zero is a number, just like anything else. Don't discriminate, poor zero. Um, and then subtract two. So now this is gone. We have four x equals negative two. Last step to getting x by itself, divide by 4. Divide by 4. So then what happens? We have x is equal to negative 1 half, and that's what goes in our solution set. Okay? Very good. Here's another one. Let's try this together. 4u plus 11 minus 3 times 2u plus 5 equals 2 times 2 minus u. So distribute your little heart out first. Notice there really isn't anything to distribute here. Why did they put it in parentheses? To mess with us, probably. 4u plus 11 minus, now this will distribute, be careful with the minus, 6u minus 15 equals, distribute, distribute, 4 minus 2u. Beautiful. Before you start moving things around, combine your like terms. So 4u minus 6u, that's negative 2u. And then we have here 11 minus 15, that's negative 4. Okay, now notice again, we have variables on the left and the right, constants on the left and the right. So let's get all our variables on the same side. Let me add 2u to move it over. And then here, something peculiar happens. So these cancel out completely. And notice we have negative four on the left and positive four on the right. Oh no, there's no variables anymore. This is a special case. Notice all the variables canceled out and we're left with negative four equals four. So let me ask you this. Does negative four equal four? No, this is a false statement. And all the variables have canceled out. There's no way to make this a true statement. So that tells me there's no solution. Oh no, don't be sad, it's not your fault. So how do we write out no solution? You could just write in words that there's no solution. You could write a set with no solution in it. That's a legitimate notation, I'm not making it up. We also have another symbol, this is the empty set. And they mean the same. this means the same thing as this, a set with nothing in it. Don't put this inside of here, then it's non-empty, okay? So you could write either this, an actual empty set, or this symbol, which represents this guy. That's it. Okay, don't get freaked out, it's fine. 
Let's try another one. 3x plus 4 equals x times, or no, x plus 2 times x plus 2. So again, distribute, distribute. So 3x plus 4 equals x plus 2x plus 4. Combine your like terms. We have 3x plus 4 equals 3x plus 4. You could stop here if you wanted, because I notice I have the exact same thing on both sides. Or if you want to take it a step further and see how the variables are going to cancel out and subtract the 3x, go for it. And then you're left with 4 equals 4. Now, this is totally different than the last situation, because notice this time this is a true statement. 4 is always equal to 4. And it doesn't matter what we plug in for x, we're going to get the same thing on both sides. So any real number, any number on the real number line that you pick for x is going to be a solution of the equation because you'll always get a true statement. So in that case, you have a lot of ways you can write your answer. You could just write all real numbers in words. And we have infinitely many solutions. We have this cool symbol. It's like a script R. It looks better if you read it in a math book, all real numbers. And then in set notation, you could write x such that x is any real number. But that's a lot of writing. Why would you do that? I don't know. Or another way of saying this portion is x is an element of or belongs to the set of all real numbers. All different ways to express your answer. Okay. Let's try this next one. Why don't you pause the video, try it on your own. Did you pause it? You should, you should give it a try. 6y minus 4y plus six, did you get that plus? Okay, good. Equals 5y plus 10 minus 3y. Combine your like terms, so we've got 2y plus six equals 2y plus 10. If you already spot the issue, you could stop here, or take it one more step, subtract 2y from both sides. And then now, oh my goodness, what do we get? We get 6 is equal to 10. That's false. That never happens. Get out of town. So no solution. I'm just going to write this. That's why also you should not put write your zeros with a line through them. Because that means something different in math. If you're a computer science or I don't know if you've learned how to, if you learned to write your zero with a line through it early on, don't do that. Okay. Lastly, remember to never divide by a variable. I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it and then the right way to do it, okay? It's very tempting. You see 4x equals 3x. This is the wrong way, guys, okay? It's tempting. You just go, oh, slashy, slashy. Let me just get rid of the x's. Boop, boop. And then what do you get? You get this garbaggio here. You get that 4 is equal to 3. That's false. That's not even how you should be doing it. It actually hurt my heart to write this. Oh my God, I can't even look at it. What do you do then, you might be asking, Professor V. Like, how should we solve it? Well, you're going to move the variables all on the same side, okay? So I'm going to subtract 3x. Let's put our variables on the left. Don't freak out. 4x minus 3x is 1x, and now I have 0. Oh, so x is 0. Got it? Yeah, that was a dangerous moment. Okay. That concludes the video on solving linear equations. Be sure to check out the following videos because we're going to go over more algebra review to prep you for your calculus course. If you need more in-depth lectures on any other topics, then be sure to check out the playlists that are on my YouTube channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later.